Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Raiden from Metal Gear or Virgil from Devil May Cry and like and subscribe for a longer hunt next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Ludwig the Accursed, the Holy Blade, the big freaking horse boss monster man from Bloodborne DLC. He actually breaks the fourth wall by breaking real walls in my apartment and putting controller shaped holes in them. I get hit almost every time. He's got a sword that's big and bright. The punish window's just too tight. He's got a big sword. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, a horse is a horse, of course, of course, but the top half of you is still a normal guy. Eh, it's pretty misshapen, but it's human-ish. Next, we need the Holy Blade, a sword of light that's sort of broken. Finally, we need to ditch the guitar for a synthesizer like it's 1984. That's a reference to the Van Halen song, Jump. I'm saying we're gonna jump. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch out for your multi-classing minimums. You're an abomination of blood and magic, that's gonna get messy. Strength will be number one. You hit like a truck, even if the truck only has one horsepower, that's still the power of a horse. Charisma next, you lead everyone on the hunt, so you need to convince them to go hunting. Constitution after that, you have a second phase, that's a lot of extra HP. Follow that up with intelligence, if you want to hunt monsters, you have to know monsters. You know what they say, be careful those who hunt monsters, because monsters are wicked scary. Dexterity is a bit low, you're not exactly stealthy, and will dump wisdom. Turns out you get a little overzealous sometimes. You get a little lost in the sauce. And the sauce is blood. We'll make Ludwig a centaur, because he ends up as a centaur and you can't swap later. Plus, we've never done a centaur, that's fun. You get plus two strength and plus one wisdom. You're actually technically a fey, which makes sense if a moonlight sword has been talking to you. You can charge someone, letting you make a hoof attack as a bonus action after you run 30 feet at a creature before making a weapon attack. Oh, we should actually talk about hooves then. They're an unarmed attack that deal 1d4 plus your strength modifier and bludgeoning damage. That's not the only part of your equine build. You also count as a larger creature when you carry things, but you stink at climbing. Not great since there are so many ladders in Yarnum. What a thrill. You get a free skill from a small list. Medicine will work great with your background in the Healing Church, though the Healing Church is more of a murder club, so that background should probably give you athletics and intimidation proficiency. It's the soldier background, and will make the other hunters respect your rank. We'll get things off as a paladin, letting you grab two skills from the paladin list, like religion and persuasion, so you can convince the people in your church to start a hunting club. It's more sinister than it sounds. You get divine sense, letting you send celestials, fiends, and undead an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier. Here's a hint big empty room top of some stairs there's gonna be a boss in there you also get lay on hands letting you heal a creature from a pool of healing equal to five times your paladin level or remove a disease or poison affecting a creature that's some actual healing wow second level paladins can choose a fighting style you're pretty great with your weapon so let's go for the great weapon fighting style that'll let you reroll ones and twos on damage die when you're using a two-handed weapon you can even add some Moonlight with Divine Favor, a Paladin spell that adds a d4 of radiant damage to your weapon attacks for a minute depending on your concentration. Heroism makes a creature immune to frightening and gives them temporary HP equal to your Charisma modifier every turn, so if they take a bit of damage, they can get their health back quickly. Detect Evil and Good lets you sense aberrations, celestials, elementals, fiends, fey, and undead. It's like your divine sense with a few more options. There's definitely some aberrations floating around Yarnum. Of course, the best paladin spell is Divine Smite, letting you add 2d8 radiant damage to an attack or an extra d8 to fiends and undead for some righteous damage with an extra d8 with higher level slots. Just don't love it too much, otherwise you're going to become a weird abomination. Though maybe you want that, who am I to judge? Third level paladins can choose a sacred oath. Vengeance is the grumpiest you can be without breaking your oath. One of the free spells is Hunter's Mark, a particular favorite of mine, which adds a d6 of damage to your weapon attacks against a creature, and you have advantage on your checks to track them down for an hour. If you don't need the Radiant, the damage buff is slightly higher than Divine Favor, and the tracking can be nice if people are running away from you, they probably will be, you're a horrifying monster. You can also channel divinity once per short rest in one of two ways. Abjure enemy will frighten a creature that fails a wisdom saving throw for a minute and stop them from moving. Your horrifying monsterness will literally stop them in their tracks. Personally, I'm more partial to the Vow of Enmity, giving you advantage on attack rolls against a creature for a minute so you can really lay the smack down and hope for a massive smite crit. Fourth level paladins get an ability score improvement. Round up your strength and constitution modifier. Odd numbers don't do you any good except for the number five. 
Why is that? Because 5th level paladins get extra attack, letting you make 2 attacks with your action instead of 1, so you have something to spend your 2nd level divine smite on. Oh, that you have a 2nd level smite now because you have 2nd level spells. Though magic weapon could actually do more damage than a smite over time, adding 1 to your attack and damage rolls with a weapon for an hour depending on your concentration. It also makes it magical in terms of overcoming resistances, stuff from other dimensions might not die to regular sharp metal. We'll bounce over to fighter now, which might seem a bit redundant with paladin, but it should make sense in a bit. For now you get a fighting style like unarmed fighting to bump your unarmed attack damage to a d6 or a d8 when you have two free hands, so phase 1 can be massive stomping and clomping. You also get second wind to recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest, making you a little more stable. Get it? Uh, stable? Like a horse? Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. That's up to four attacks with your extra attack, letting you get your DLC level of aggressive. The only boss more aggressive than you is the Placenta Denta. Third level fighter is what we're here for. You're in charge of the hunters, but if you want to be large and in charge, you need to be a rune knight. Someone said rune knight is the most basic fighter. That's not true. It makes you giant with giant's might, making you large, giving you advantage on strength checks and saves, and an extra d8 of damage to one attack per round. The true benefit here is the size, letting you take up a 10 by 10 foot cube. It's not quite big enough, but it's a start. You can also grab a couple of runes. Frost will give you advantage on animal handling and intimidation checks, and for 10 minutes per short rest, you can add two to your strength and constitution checks, which will make your towing capacity truly massive. The stone rune gives you advantage on inside checks and 120 feet of dark vision, so you can fight in a spooky low light area. You can also force a wisdom saving throw on a creature, failing that they're charmed by you and can't move for up to a minute, though they can re-roll that on their turn. You're getting a lot of ways to stop people from moving. It's not intentional, but it should help you run them over. 4th level fighters get an ability score improvement. Use it to cap off your strength modifier so we can hit as hard as possible. Almost as hard as possible. Jumping over to Sorcerer to keep things messy, Holy Soulies get lasers, so we'll go there. The actual name is, uh, what is the actual name? The actual name is Divine Soul Sorcerer, but come on, it's Holy Soulie. You're favored by the gods, letting you add 2d4 to a failed attack roll or saving throw once per short rest. That will give you those baloney hitboxes so you can smack people even when they clearly dodged you. God, this game sucks. You also get cantrips and spells and can yoink a few from the cleric list. Guidance and resistance give creatures a d4 for their ability check or saving throw respectively. Thunderclap forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 5 foot radius around you, dealing 2d6 thunder damage to those that fail for a nice shockwave attack. And Sacred Flame forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing 2d6 radiant damage to those that fail. You also get to ignore cover. Again, baloney hitboxes. Three first level spells, jump will triple your jump distance for a minute for 24 feet of vertical hops, putting you somewhere on the ceiling. Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage and pushing them back 10 feet if they fail, half damage and no pushing if they succeed. It might be kind of easy to avoid considering your charisma modifier right now, but that's fair. The Shockwave is probably the easiest Ludwig attack to dodge. Since we're multi-classing spellcasters, check page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many slots you have at any given level. I need to come up with some sort of joke for page 165 since I talk about it a lot. Follow me on Twitter and suggest something for me. It's at to lock the. You could also use those higher level slots for higher level smites. Since you can't learn any spells anyway of higher levels, oh well, I guess that's more 5d8 smites for me. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots. That means more smites. I'm into that. For this level spell, Guiding Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 4d6 radiant damage and gives the next creature attacking the person you shot advantage on the roll so your fellow hunters can get a nice smack on. Third level sorcerers get Meta Magic, letting you spend sorcery points to augment your spells. Heightened Spell gives a creature disadvantage on saving throws against your spells because of the baloney hitboxes. Empowered Spell lets you reroll a number of damage die equal to your charisma modifier. All Ludwig does is charge his sword, do big damage, eat hot chip, and make die. You also get second level spells, like Enlarge Reduce, letting you increase the creature's size, add a d4 to their damage with weapons, and give them advantage on strength checks and saves. Pair that with Giant's Might and you're filling a 15 by 15 foot square, threatening all of them squares with your big hunk and sword. Fourth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement or feat. The great weapon master feat lets you hit harder with your big hunkin' sword, taking a negative five penalty to your attack rolls to add 10 to the damage. When you critically hit, you also get to make another attack as a bonus action or when you reduce someone to zero HP. 
And Vow of Enmity gives you advantage on attack rolls, or as I like to call it, twice as many crits. It's so good it kinda makes you want to throw up. Tasha's Caustic Brew will throw a bunch of acid in a 30 foot line, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures, failing that they take 2d4 damage at the start of their turns until they use their action to scrape it off. It's just nasty, it's sort of like horse loogies spraying everywhere. Let's go back to Paladin now. Sixth level Paladins get Aura of Protection, letting your allies within 10 feet of you add your Charisma modifier to their saving throws. That Holy Moonlight just makes the Hunters better. Really guides them, you know? Seventh level Vengeance Paladins get Relentless Avenger, letting you move up to half your movement speed after you hit someone with an opportunity attack, making you even harder to get away from. This is really good on a Centaur, since their base movement speed is 40, putting you 10 feet behind a standard humanoid who tried to disengage. Eighth level Paladins get another ability score improvement, let's start working on your Charisma modifier to make all of your saving throws better. Was I not clear about that? Aura of Protection also lets you give yourself that bonus too. That means no negative modifiers for your saving throws. It's busted. Ninth level paladins get third level spells. Vengeance paladins get haste for free, letting you double your movement speed, add two to your AC. You get advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or make one more attack. It requires your concentration for a minute, and when it's over, you have to take a round off of actions and reactions, letting your enemies actually get a hit in. Unfortunately, you can't use this with Enlarge, but you can use Giant's Might to be big and fast. Crusader's Mantle is another option. It's divine favor for all friendly creatures within 30 feet of you. That's a full-on hunting party of Holy Avengers. Honorable Spartans! 10th level Paladins get Aura of Courage, making your allies within 10 feet of you immune to frightening effects, even if the moon gives birth to a 60-foot person centipede. They'll be cool, they're abomination moon horses with them. This is a weird game. 11th level Paladins get Improved Divine Smite, adding a D8 to all of your weapon attacks with a weapon. Unfortunately, you don't get Holy Hooves because Jeremy Crawford said so on Twitter. But you can still charge in and smash with a sword, then clobber someone with your feet. That's an option. Also, Ludwig's feet aren't holy, so, you know, it kind of works out. Our capstone is the 12th level of Paladin for one last ability score improvement. Get your charisma higher to be a little bit better at all your saving throws and to make your AoEs less easy to avoid. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you hit hard. So hard. With a standard attack, dealing 2d6 plus 15 slashing damage plus 1d8 radiant damage. Your max damage in a single round is 10d6 plus 1d8 plus 75 bludgeoning damage and 28d8 radiant damage with haste, action surge, great weapon master, and 5 max level smites with your extra slots. With median damage rolls, that's 221 damage. Oh, and you can double your crit chance with a vow of enmity. And if you crit, you get another attack. You're also big. Being big is good because it gives you more opportunity attacks and extends your auras ranges for your allies. Finally, you don't have any negative saving throws, ranging from plus 4 to dexterity to plus 10 with charisma. If someone wants to beat you, they're gonna have to use weapons. That brings us to our weaknesses, because your AC is pretty low if you're playing to character and wearing no armor. But you do have proficiency and the strength high enough for plate mail, so, you know, maybe just wear plate mail. You also have a lot of concentration spells and can only have one up at a time. Finally, you're pretty dependent on radiant damage. Some holy stuff is going to be fully immune to it. Thankfully, you're only here to hunt eldritch abominations. Light the blade, charge in, and deal an absolutely unreasonable amount of damage. Just realize that you're going to be killing a lot of people with this damage, and their orphans might seek vengeance. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Raiden from Metal Gear or Virgil from Devil May Cry and sub to Tulak and Mango to watch us play Bloodborne. We beat the whole thing. Even costs, eventually.